Hey guys, we are live, live on YouTube, and uh, I've been having issues with this uh, big Tonka Winnebago because it's so heavy. Uh, when I go side hilling a little bit, there's just too much, um, too much strain on the tires because it uh, it collapsed the tires because this is the original foam that came with it, and uh, I'm not sure if I can actually get this picture a little bit better hold on here we go so this is very soft foam so since i got these i knew they were going to be uh um, heavy i can't remember how much this weighs i did weigh it once i tried to find my scale uh before this video to actually weigh it but i could not find the scale so that said i'll find it later and i'll probably put it in the description i'll try to anyways so i have to take off the tires um Funny thing is, I've tried, and I forgot, but I tried with this, and it just doesn't fit in these tires. These are the boom racing. And then I do have this thing that's a little bit uh, about the same thing, but that does not even fit in there. That's because the hole here is so small, and it actually has thread because you're, they, there's caps that comes on here. But I actually lost these two on this side, but the other side, they're still there. So you actually have to use this tool that comes with it. So I did buy I did uh, buy two of them. So this is a tool from Boom Racing to take off the tires. It does have a little hole there if ever you need to put something in there to help you torque it, so you can actually put your uh, your wrench in there to help you actually take it off or torque it down. But I don't tighten them. I don't put them tight enough, so it doesn't matter. Oh, and what I'm putting today is actually the Boom Racing uh, BRTR 2939 uh, 3. Uh, they're the 1.9 single stage closed cell foam crawling tire insert for the uh, Mud Terrain Trophy tires, which are these tires. So these are specially made for these tires. So I did take two of them out of the pack already. So take this off. And then we're going to have to take the, the bead lock off. Hey, Green Frogger, see how are you doing? Finally got around to getting some single stage clothes foam for my uh, beast here, the Winnebago. Uh, these are 3D printed, uh, not 3D printed, yeah, they are 3D printed um, axle from GCM Racing uh, that I got. Um, so I almost lost my little washer in there. Forgot there was a washer in there. So basically, you have a nut and a small little washer in there. And to take off the, uh, the whole thing, you, you got to take off these screws. And then this comes apart, which we'll do in a minute. These tires, I love these tires. They're very scale. Um, I meant to uh, uh, weather them down, but I never did so far. So ARC Daniel, Green Frog, CLS, how are you guys doing? So finally got around to getting some closed cell phone. And that's what we're going to install in these today. So basically, you just take your wrench. I don't like using... 90% uh, of the time, I do not use a, um, a drill. I just use uh, the wrench for the simple reason is I don't like stripping screws. These are very small. And this is the first tire I'm doing. And uh, I've taken pictures of it before, but man, these tires, when you... Uh, when you have these, like they really collapse. The foam that's in there is not bad, and it, there is a little bit of air because these are sealed, um, so they are acting a little bit. But I just need something better. I just need I just need better performance because my truck is way too heavy. This thing is way too heavy for the um, normal foam that comes with these guys. Is Gorilla Tape inside off-road tires could be a good idea? Yes, it could be a good idea. Gorilla Tape or any kind of duct tape acts like a, um, a steel belt in your tires. So if you have anything that has a lot of power um, and you don't want them to balloon, 
uh, you can actually open up your tires and put a row of Gorilla Tape inside your tires. And then when the foam actually uh, close it, uh, it will it will help the tires from ballooning. These boom racing are kind of cool in a way because everything is lined up with the, um, you can see the white rim underneath, the white part. But if, when you put it back together, if you're not right on, it will actually be offset. So you do have to be careful a little bit. So basically, now that the, um, the whole part, this whole part with the hex is actually one piece. It's actually one piece of aluminum. Um, which I thought the hex came off, but I guess it doesn't. No, it's actually all one piece. So the whole piece here with the hex is actually one big giant piece. And then you have the front, which is steel. And you do have a steel rim inside to help the beadlock on these tires. And then, wow, I've had these now for probably two years in there, and they are dirty. Some water or moisture or some stuff did get in there. So pretty much perfectly the same size. Wow, I wouldn't have thought that they would have gotten that dirty. So these are kind of tricky in a way because if you bend them too much and not like the other tire, uh, other foam, so you could actually split them and break them. So you just have to insert it on one side and then just work your way in. They're a little bit trickier to put, but the single stage are, are not as hard as the dual stage uh, because the dual stage you actually have... Um, a small foam, a soft foam, and then you got a hard foam. So just got to make sure that everything is right, because right now you can see that the foam is not in there. Can you wash the foam? Yes, you can actually wash this foam. There's no need to wash it, but you could actually wash the foam. But before putting it back in the tire, uh, air dry them, make sure they're nice and dry before putting in there, or else it's going to stink like crazy once you reopen it. I don't know what I'll do with these foams. I'll probably keep them and see what I do with them in the future. But right now, I'm just trying to make sure the foam is directly in the center everywhere on this tire. Hey, Robert, how are you doing? So this one looks okay. Now I can put the steel rim, the steel ring in there. Now this steel ring is going to be a little bit of a bugger to put in there because this foam is friggin' tight. But with a little bit of persuasion, it does go in. I'm just making sure the bead is actually on, on every side. Yes, it is. Wow, these things are going to be like a rock. Wow, it's going to be crazy. Because, like, full collapse and nothing on this one. Right now, these things are just like Ford, like a rock. So, time to put one side in. Now, these tires are exactly the same drawing on both sides, just making sure. Yes, they are. Okay. Now, here's the tricky part, is when you actually put this ring, if you don't put it exactly where it goes, these will be offset. But you do have to be careful of matching where the, the, the screws are. So since this ring is a little bit tougher to put, I'll put this one first. Make sure it's completely pushed in. And 
now I have to make sure because if I line up the this crew with the hole there, I can tell if the other holes are going to be the same also. Okay, now the tricky part is to do this on camera. Hey, thanks, Robert. Hey, Asgard Studio, how are you doing? I was going to do a Zoom meeting for this, but I decided not to. I decided just to go live and install these tires and hear me talk uh, without interruption. So now I just got to find the hole. Come on, find the hole. Can't find the hole. That's what she said. There, I think I got it. I got it in the hole. I can feel it. So I'm changing what I'm doing today for these tires. I'm actually changing the tires to a different foam. Um, it's a much stiffer foam. This is the old foam that used to be in there, and it's actually dirty right now. It's actually brown because of uh, the the sand and the dirt that was in there. Uh, because of the weight of this truck, it just collapsed the tire too much. So uh, I decided to buy what's called a closed closed cell foam uh, stage foam tire, and put that in there, which is a very stiff foam. Am I running brushless? No, I am not running brushless. I actually have a um, 35 turn, I think, in there. I can't remember what I got in here. I got to look. No, it's a brushed uh, system in here. There was no sense uh, running brushless. Um, we do not want to go fast with this thing. It is very tippy. But saying that, it's very tippy. It's... It handles very great and very good. Um, it is on leaf spring with uh, co uh, coil shocks. So it handles pretty good. Mind you, in the rear, I do want to add some springs. So I don't know if I'll do that today. But uh, one day soon, I will be taking off the rear and actually adding leaf springs on there. Because last time I actually pulled a trailer. And uh, let me tell you, the... Trailer was making the rear end sag on this. Lots of weight. Are we getting ready for camping season? Yes, I hope so. Getting the camper ready to go outside and uh, I want to do a nice little video with the 64, pulling this, uh, pulling my trailer with the 64 at the back, uh, Red Cat 64 and just faking that we're going to a car show or something. Line up all my on-road cars and uh, unload it and do a nice little video with it. So, There, one tire done. Man, this thing is so hard. That's what she said. Like a rock. So now time to take off the other one. And like I mentioned, these tires have a special key to actually take them off. So if ever you go out somewhere with these truck or this tire, better make sure you have this tool in your uh, bag. What it is, it's, it's just a regular uh, seven millimeter, but it's very thin here around the edges. And it permits it to go into the hole. I'm out of there. Now, this is the tire with the foam. I can barely squish it, and this one I can really squish it. 
So that's the biggest difference of these. So right now, I could, if I really press hard, I can squish it, but that's the main reason because this thing weighs so much. I just want better traction. So this is going to help this truck a lot. I can't wait to see what's the damage on these tires on this side. Uh, not the damage, but see how the foam actually is on there. <laughs> 30 PSI and 80 PSI. That's about the gist of it, yes. Or um, uh, the side belt. Um, some truck have thinner sidewalls, uh, thicker sidewalls, I mean. Yeah, and I decided to use today, instead of using um, uh, Zoom, I decided to use this, and it's the directly from YouTube. You can actually go live now directly with the camera. So I actually wanted to see what the resolution is and how it actually acted. Uh, I am using the microphone that's in front of me, which is about uh, three feet away from me right now, but it's the one from the, the camera. So hopefully that's good. I am not using my uh, microphone I usually use when I do my RC talk. So my voice is going to be a little bit different. Take that off and take the ring off. And this, type, this foam is also brown to say that they used to be perfectly white. So even though they, they kind of are sealed, there is dust and a little bit of dirt that actually gets in there. These tires are, are kind of neat because they do have uh, reinforcement ribs on it. So they've thought of pretty good little tire anyways. We'll just turn it inside out just to show you guys. So a lot of tire manufacturers don't even bother doing this. So this gives you support on the sidewalls of the tires so you get better performance. So the boom racing are pretty good. So not time to put in the other one. I don't want to squish it too hard because I don't want to break it because these foams you can actually, if you squish it a certain way, you can actually break the foam. And now I have to make sure it's perfectly centered because you can tell here there's kind of a bump and here there's not. So I have to push everything off to the side and just work it, work it in properly. So everything is centered, because if it's not, you're going to have an unbalanced tire. And going at 100 miles an hour, you're really going to feel that. Mind you, this does not go 100 miles an hour. And no, I don't wish it, it could, because that'd be kind of crazy. But hey, some people like crazy. That looks pretty good. One thing I got to make sure is that these do have a V-groove kind of on it. And I want to make sure that my V-groove is going towards the front. So these are directional. So when you actually put them together, you got just got to make sure that you do put your, your rims the right way.
are all your tires beadlock. Pretty much for all my crawlers, yes, they are beadlock. Um, for my speedster, my speed tr truck, no, they're not because beadlocks are not good. They usually come off in high speed. The tire stretches so much, it will come off the bead. Uh, and I noticed that very much on my slash uh, once I run it on 3S. Uh, the bead was actually coming off of it. So uh, I wasn't too fun. Especially during a race. Uh, I had to come out of a race because of that and actually put my other set of tires on there, which is was kind of no fun because I really like my uh, tires that were on the beadlock. But I learned fast the next race after that... Uh, I should glue my tires when you're racing and don't use beadlocks. Okay, so now I have to make sure that both the same side, same way. And I got to put this on this side because if I put it on the other side and then put the red, that I would have my tires going the wrong way. And now I have to line up my hole. Sometime when I'm doing these live stream, I always feel like putting on music or something, but because of copyrights, you can't. Now, these are very e B-lock, very easy to do because you can squish it a little bit to actually put the screw. And uh, on top of that, the uh, hex on it is, is not a small little bolt that you have to hold the bolt, hold this, push everything in, like some of the B-locks that you have to do. So these are very easy to do. And usually when you do a beadlock like this, uh, this one is kind of easy, uh, but you do have to kind of go on a star pattern. So you do one side, you do the other side, and then you come back on this side. So you keep going an alternate, alternate side, and you screw down slowly on each side until you're actually done. So you just do the star pattern and just keep putting screws in there. Like that, it just squishes, it just squishes everything equally. Uh, on all sides, like that, you don't run into trouble. Now, I am not using OBS. I'm using directly to the camera, and uh, I don't think I can. Once I start the live stream, I never tested it. If I could change the screen, but... If I used OBS, I could have put a logo, I could have put messages, I could have put a whole bunch of different stuff, but I did not this time. Uh, maybe I will next time, but I believe with OBS, it, it brings your resolution down to uh, 720. So I hopefully I'm at 10, 20, uh, 1080 right now. So once the stream is over, I'll go check to make sure I am at 1080. And just like JP Slayer was saying earlier, I am preparing to go camping with the Winnebago. Once this is done, I can do my red cat. Oh, this is going to be so cool on there. No more collapsing. And I was going on a little bit of side healing with this and, and the tires, you could see the tires were just collapsing and the whole truck was going sideways because I was getting no, no grip at all. So this one used to be in the front. Now I'm putting it at the back. So I'm actually doing a uh, tire rotation at the same time as I'm doing the foam swap actually going from 30 PSI to 80 PSI, just like JP Slayer was saying earlier. He always comes out with the uh, cool little saying or one-line blurb. These are all the, uh, the nylon, nylon bearing, bearing that the Tamaya supplies you. So I got to put them aside with all the other ones I have. I keep keeping them. I don't know why I keep them. 
but I keep them. There, one tire done. And it took me 25 minutes to take the tires off, talk to you guys, and put it back on. That's not bad. If we keep this up, it's going to be a one-hour show. Like I said, I might put leaf spring in the back. So I don't know, more leaf spring. Let's see if I can find them. I think I know where they are. Leaf spring on my TF2 actually broke one time. Well, that's because I fell on it. So I had to buy a new set. So I did keep the other ones. There we go. Time to flip it. Flip it good. So just show you guys real quick underneath. So there's underneath the truck. Uh, it is a Team Raffi motor. And I can't for the heck of me remember what size, what how many turns it is. Um, these are uh, 3D uh, printed axles. This is the C-Max uh, chassis. What I like about this chassis is that the tower, the tower frame for the shocks are not high. They're pretty, they're about uh, half inch to three quarters of an inch tall. So the frame is actually pretty, it's, 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 it's almost snug to the camper. And I did not have to do any holes in the camper except where the motor is because there is a 3D printed motor on top of this. So uh, it made it really cool. And I do have, like I said, leaf springs and shocks. Uh, when I went to the G6 on this side, I was running it on 3S, uh, and I actually was jumping with the Winnebago. And uh, and that's why I want to put more leaf springs on here, is uh, I actually broke one of these off here uh, that actually holds a shock. So uh, that was kind of uh, neat. But uh, GCM Racing Chris uh, sent me a new one, so I actually replaced it. So that's that. And this is the interior. And right now this kind of fell. So I did finish off the interior. I did put some stuff, uh, some 3D, uh, uh, not 3D, some scale accessories all over the place in there. Uh, here's a welder's tank. Um, little guy here fixing his uh, Jeep. So, a lot of cool little stuff on there. So let's flip it on to the other side. And on this side, I knew that was going to happen. I did not lose my caps. They do have little tiny caps that have a thread on it. Come on, focus. It won't focus. There we go. It does have a little tiny thread on it. And it actually goes onto in the hole and actually thread. And that's why you need that special tool to actually take off these tires. Thanks, Ethan. Uh, Net Cruiser, yes, I do a lot of collaboration with Net Cruiser. He he lives about um, 20, 20 minutes from me, 20, 25 minutes from me. Uh, I see him all the time on the trails. He actually comes on my trail and actually have fun on my trail once in a while. Uh, I do go bashing with him a little bit. Uh, trail Critter, he's a little far, but um, uh, he is planning to come to one of my events this year. So uh, I... I do see John from Net Cruiser quite a bit. Oh, G Green, G Green is there, and G Green actually came here a couple times, so hopefully we'll see him again this uh, this year. I didn't even notice that he was in here.
he's in Montreal. Montreal has been hit pretty hard with the COVID uh, this year. So hopefully everybody's fine over there and everybody's keeping their distance. Yeah, it'll be there depending on COVID. BS. I hear you. I was planning to do a lot of events this year and it's actually falling falling through. I, I have to close off half my uh, half my trails at the back because the owner of the property uh, gave gave it to his daughter and uh, she came over and after talking, blah, 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 yes, you're allowed. No, you're not allowed. Yes, you're allowed. Looks like I'm not allowed anymore. So on half my trails, I have to close it off, which includes Sandy Hill. But I have the other half that there's no problem. I can still do it. So uh, I'll keep I'll keep it going. I'll I'll just make it bigger on the other side. Yeah, but when you're trying to do a a trail not on your property, you do have to listen to them. Uh, I am not hurting or cutting down any trees. Uh, I'm actually helping the forest because I'm actually uh, cleaning the trees that are actually falling down. Um, all the branches that are about high, uh, the height of your eye, uh, when you're walking around, I clean those off the trees. Like I, I was pruning the trees in other words. So I was actually cleaning the forest. And usually the guys were very good not putting any any garbage into the, into the trail. So, which was good. Hey, Kevin Gibbs, how are you doing? I love these. I love these boom raising rims. Wow, I got sand in there. How the heck does sand get in there when it's so sealed? How the heck does sand get in there? I don't know. Again, this one is just like the other one. It's nice and brown with dirt. And you can actually wash these in uh, soap and uh, just make sure you do clean them. Uh, let them dry before you actually put them back in there. But you can tell that one is not as dirty as the other ones. Got to open up the bag. Don't you just like it when you open up boom racing bags? Oh, I think it's time to change my blade. My blade is uh, not cutting anymore. So closed cell foam, very tough, very hard. You can actually squish them, but it takes a lot. It, it takes a lot compared to these. You can just like squish them. So this is not memory foam. It's just like just foam in general. Uh, this is very dense foam. And this is actually waterproof. So in other words, um, water cannot penetrate this, um, this foam. Uh, it can, if you put this in water, they be, do become all wet and then become unbalanced and all that, especially in the speed car. Or you notice that a lot in the bashers so make sure there's no dust or sand into that tire now i'm gonna put the tire in this one also squeeze it in there Squish the tire, squish, squish the tire. Push and tuck, push and tuck. So what are you guys working on today? Or any housework to do or what is there to do? It's friggin' cold here. Like it was one degree this morning. It was crazy. I... I 
I was planning on next month, on the middle of next month, doing an event here. But I think I'll have to postpone it a little bit due to COVID again. Um, maybe put it on the next month after. But it's basically a TTC, Tough Truck Challenge, uh, that people can come and do some stuff. So I'll have uh, some sumo wrestling with the RCs. That's going to be fun. Uh, some truck pulling competition with the all trail trucks. So I want people to bring their trail trucks and actually try some of this. Uh, I'm going to have a hill climb challenge to see how, how far or how good your car can actually climb. Um, so, and actually side hill also. I still have to build that one, the side hill. But the hill climb is actually all built. And I'm going to do some drag racing also. So drag racing should be a lot of fun. Good, Kevin Gibbs is feeling good. So again, here, I gotta make sure I'm putting my tires the right way. Looks about right. Now, again, when you're putting bead locks together, you do have to work kind of on a star pattern, like I mentioned earlier. So basically you put one star, one there, one there, then you go across and then you go across. That just pushes everything equal. How about you, uh, Grant? How how's you been? How have you been doing? I know you were sick a little while back. Are you still sick? How are you feeling? After that, one more tire to go. And I am screwing it kind of on the star pattern. Um, Doing this with a drill, I would not do this with a drill. Uh, I'm doing okay, good, that sounds good. And uh, I was told by Chris from GCM Racing, usually on bead locks like this, there's always a pressure on that rim that pushes on those screws. So even though I'm, I am screwing it into metal here, into aluminum, I did not put any bead lock, uh, any Loctite, sorry any Loctite on this. So uh, no Loctite. And I never lost a screw on these. On bead locks, especially the ones that actually has a constant pressure on it, like this one does. Not a problem. It's kind of neat how you, you can't see it, but the bead is perfect all the way along. And it's sitting in there. Good. So... All right, we'll put this one in the rear. Not sure where this one was before, but we'll put it there. Regretting buying a low-C LMT, really? Parts are hard to get. Uh, repl uh, the same replacement mar part or um, upgrade parts, hard to get. That's what happens, eh? The, the low-C LMT is new and... It took a long time for them to come out. Once it came out, 
there is issues with those axles. There's a lot of power in that truck, and you can make it jump pretty good. Uh, and when you make a jump, you have a risk of breaking those axles. Uh, lots of weight on that truck. It's a wide truck. Um, people broke a lot of wraith axles, and and, and now the uh, other trucks, the other monster truck from uh, Axial, uh, are using the wraith axle or similar to it. Uh, so they fix a couple little for different things. So, and now it's it's the other guys. They're coming out with axles, but they did fix the new ones. Uh, waiting for new axles. Uh, replacement uh, from low C or upgraded axles. If ever you guys are doing or want stickers or whatever for your truck. All these stickers, all this, this one, this big one, that's all from shipping labels. So it's uh, uh, every, you get those at the store where you you buy paper and all that. Every shipping label is the clear ones. So print your, uh, print it on a laser jet or ink jet. And I actually seal those with a, before cutting them and before putting them on. I seal them with a clear acrylic paint, um, so they shouldn't come off. So they've been on there for quite a long no time now, and uh, this is the same thing. This is a uh, printed. So I printed them on the laser uh, from work, but uh, I hear you, and I've done it before in um, in a bubble jet. So one more tire to go. Yeah, it's always no fun when you get a, a new truck and you uh, break something on it and you're wait, waiting for parts. Replacement axles for now because it's first gen and they guaranteed. Okay. Yeah, the upgraded ones are expensive. But I'm glad you're getting the replacement ones because they they are a little tougher. They're all um, they got those ribs inside, so which is good. Makes them a heck of a lot better. Oh, I think I know where the sand's coming from. It's right where those holes, where where this this actually goes on here. It is not. Yeah, that's it. Right here, there's actually uh, holes, and it's not completely sealed. And that's where the sand is actually coming from. Even though you're squished. There's still just a little bit of a gap. That's where the the sand is coming from. Wow. And here is the fourth one. See you later, Robert. Thanks for coming in here. Don't forget to thumbs up the video on your way out or on your way in. It really helps the algorithm for people to watch the videos. Maybe I should do a trail video after with this. Come on, get in there. 
again, I got to make sure everything is centered on here. Thanks for sticking in here, guys, with me. I appreciate the. The collaboration that you guys have been giving me and sticking with me and viewing the stuff I do and hopefully it is helpful for some of you and for others it's probably repetitive but hey it's always fun this is half the fun is playing with this this stuff and having some fun Half the fun is building it. I have to make sure I was going the right way with it. I'm so happy this phone came in. Man, it took almost from Japan, it took almost a month and a half to get here. It's crazy. We were supposed to do a urban crawl downtown Ottawa, and I ordered it like a week or two, two weeks before the crawl. And I said, ah, oh, it's going to take two weeks. I've ordered from, from Asia Tees before, and it got here within two weeks. But this time, no way. It just took its sweet time to get here. It was crazy. Maybe it was stuck on that barge there that was blocking all the traffic. I don't know. I just know it took a long time to get here. I really like the way these, these are made. I know I made that comment before, but... One of the easiest speed lock to work with is really nice and easy. And both monster truck needs new and better tires. Why? What's wrong with the tires that they actually have? Uh, they're not grippy enough or it's a friggin' monster truck. What, what kind of grips or what kind of tires do you want? Is it because they're no good in mud? Is, is What's the reasoning you'd want to change the tires? Just like on my Cloudbuster, I think those tires are decent for what they do, but I don't see a reason why I would want to change them unless I turn it into a mud. Oh, oh I forgot to put the ring. There I am talking, blah, 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 and I forgot to put the ring in there. I hope it's in this tire and not the rear one. Well, let's find out. Take it apart. Talk, talk, talk. How come you guys didn't tell me? How come you guys didn't tell me? I forgot the ring. That's what you guys are there for. You're supposed to go, hey, uh, aren't you forgetting something? That's what you're supposed to type in the comments. Terrible. I thought you guys had my back. Hey, nine watching right now, and uh, 12 thumbs up. Thank you very much for the 12 thumbs up, guys. Really appreciate it. The axial tires are too small, and Lozy are not aggressive enough. Oh, really? That's why this one came in. It was so easy to put. I forgot to put the ring. Uh, Grant, do you have a Clodbuster? Just wondering what size comparison between a Clodbuster, how, how the size of a Clodbuster tire compared to what you got. I got to get some guys over here with some monster truck and have some fun in the back. Last time Grant was here, he was actually playing with the Sumo, playing on the Sumo, uh, with his uh, monster truck. He was having lots of fun.
problem with playing with the monster truck on sumo is that the tires are so big that you don't push people off, you climb over them. Makes it kind of tough to uh, do some sumo wrestling. Oh, that's wrong. Uh, Cloudbuster and LMT are close, but I believe Cloudbuster are a bit wider. Oh, really? Cool. I love those tires on the Cloudbuster. Uh, I, I basically like the Cloudbuster how how it is, and it, it's it's really neat because I set up in the rear. I have old bodies, and uh, I just was jumping over them with me and my son, and uh, it was a fun time. Uh, he really enjoyed it, especially what I told him: just just go crazy, just like go fast, go really fast and just let it go and just have fun. He goes, really? I go, yeah, just just punch it. It was okay. So he was punching it so hard, he was running out of control. But I, I told him after, listen, you got to punch it, but stay in control. That's that's the hard part. In other words, hit the throttle full pin, but once you start getting in trouble, you got to know when to release it. So he was having fun. It's all part of learning. That's a fun. I like bead locks in the sense that you you can change tires and try different tires and don't have to buy rims, uh, especially if you have a special rim that you like. Um, so glued tires on crawlers I don't like because I do like to try out different tires once in a while. There, done. Oh, this is going to be so cool on this truck. Very nice and tough. Really going to make the suspension work on this thing now. Because all hits and things like that is not going to be just on the foam. It's going to be on the suspension also. So it's going to make this uh, perform a heck of a lot different. Really help, uh, enjoy that you guys are sticking around with me, all eight of you watching. Thank you very much. It's been going up and down since I started the stream. Now, I know that one of them is usually different yeah the cap they have a little drawing on it so it's the rear has a little kind of knob on it that's basically to lock the rear or is it the front yeah, i think the lock goes in the front yeah because the rear is always locked usually on a four by four and then the front you can actually lock or unlock it so these cap actually comes off after a while on the trail. I already lost two, so I'm going to have to check to see if I can order more. Okay, how come this one is not going in deeper? Because it's all the way in. This clue is kind of long on that one. Unless that was the front one.
Yeah, it's about the same thing. Yeah, I guess it is. It's just this nut seems to stick out more than the front one. So this one goes in deeper. There we go. Nice and stiff. Now what to do with these foams? Don't know. I'll keep them now. I'll put them in my tire uh, bin and see what I do with them. Cool. And now I got to look for my spring and see if I'm going to do this today or not. Is change the... Um, leaf spring in the back so basically is taking this axle off which means I have to take um, the frame off because I do have to and it's pretty easy uh, we drilled some holes here there's a hole a small little tiny hole here beside the sign and it actually goes where the nut is inside here and there's another one here at the back right here there's a little tiny hole and uh, the whole thing just comes off. It's very easy. There's four little brackets. And then I can actually get access to these screws here and uh, take off the axle and uh, add some leaf springs at the back. So actually, leaf spring at the back here. What What is weird is that I guess it's the way the Winnebago is done. The rear seems to be so much heavier, and I'm don't understand why uh, maybe it's because the distance from here to here is greater than than here but uh in the rear it's it's freaking heavy i it, it's odd but um now i gotta look to put some new springs on there Uh, I'm retiring my Club Buster this year. I'm asking my wife for a new one for my birthday. Yeah, they're they're pretty affordable. So if you're right retiring, good. It's going to become a shelf queen or sell it. But uh, it's always nice to keep your RCs and, uh, as a collection and remembering remembering them and things like that. It's all the fun you've had with them. And so cool. So I'll just flip this on the other side because the lid stays open better on this side. There we go. So guys, thank a lot. thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to cut this stream now and uh, look for the real leaves. Uh, and I might be on after if I do find the leaves and actually continue a different stream uh, saying that changing the leaves at the back. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget to comment and uh, uh, thumbs up, sorry. And leave a comment and uh, subscribe to see more videos. And guys, go charge up those batteries and have some fun. Uh, go out there and break something. Because if you're not breaking anything, you're not having any fun. Thanks, and we'll talk to you guys later. Cheers. See you later, CK Hobby Shop. See you later, Kevin Gibbs. Uh, see you later, Grant. We'll talk to you guys later. Cheers. <laughs>